Have you ever had one of those teaching moments that you are 100% certain you will never forget? Well, I had one in my second year teaching fifth grade math. If I'm being honest, I was really learning fifth grade math concepts right alongside my students. First year was about survival. Second year, I was really diving deep into the content that I don't think I'd really ever truly understood until I became a teacher. So at this point, we were sitting at a teacher table. I was working with a small group of students and we were working on what was supposed to be a fraction multiplication problem. And so I was working with three or four students and we were looking at the problem and I kind of gave them some time to work on it on their own before comparing answers. And so three students used the algorithm for multiplying fractions and another student converted to decimals and used the algorithm for multiplying decimals. And we were comparing strategies, approaches, like their work and all of that. And it was like something, it was like the the clouds parted and something just clicked because I realized that the algorithm for multiplying fractions and the algorithm for multiplying decimals is the exact same. You're going through the same process, the same thing is happening, and it had never clicked before for me until that moment. And I'll tell you a little bit later in the video, but really that moment changed so much for me. So two things that I want you to get out of this video. One, I'm gonna walk you through how the multiplying fractions uh, algorithm and the algorithm for multiplying decimals are the same so that hopefully if you haven't had this aha moment, you have it too. But also, even if you know how they are the exact same, I want you to stick around because this moment sparked so much curiosity in me and it transformed so much of who I am as a teacher, the path that I went on. It's exactly the type of moment that we want for our students. We want to spark moments for our students that make them so curious about math, so excited to learn that they apply it to other concepts and they just go on this path to continue learning. So stick around because I have three ways that you can create these types of learning experiences for your students. Now let's take a look at these two algorithms. One of my favorite ways to show students connections in math is to have them working side by side in two different ways, whether it's um, with an algorithm and manipulatives or pictures in an algorithm or manipulatives in a picture, or maybe even two different written models. That side-by-side -side experience is so powerful for them and really reveals the connections that we want students to make. So we're gonna take a look at the multiplying fractions algorithm and the multiplying decimals algorithm side-by-side -side so you can see how they are the same. So here we've got 14 hundredths by eight tenths. And then on this side, we've got 14 hundredths by eight tenths. Now, a quick disclaimer, I'm gonna walk you through this using language that is very procedural. This is not the language I would use with students because ultimately we would not even be working with the algorithms until we had built understanding first. So let's start with the algorithm for multiplying fractions first. We know that the algorithm for multiplying fractions is to multiply the numerator by the numerator and the denominator by the denominator. So we multiply the two numerators together, 14 by eight. We get an answer of 112. With multiplying decimals, a lot of times students are taught to simply ignore the decimals and treat them like whole numbers for now. So that leaves us with 14 by eight, which of course is 112. Back to multiplying fractions, now we need to multiply the denominator by the denominator, which is 100 times 10, which gives us 1,000. So our answer is 112 thousandths. Now, remember that the fraction bar means division, so we really end up with an answer that is 112 divided by 1,000. That is important for you to keep in mind because we're gonna come back to that in just a bit. Back over to multiplying decimals, we have an answer of 112, but now students are often taught to count up all of the places behind the decimals in the problem, and that will tell us how many spaces should be behind the decimal in the answer. So when we count it up, we see that there's two places behind the decimal in 14 hundredths, and there's one place behind the decimal in 8 tenths, which gives us three places behind the decimal. Now, do you remember what moving the decimal three places to the left is doing? It is dividing by 1,000, which is exactly what we just did in our fraction algorithm. We move the decimal three places to the left, we end up with an answer of 112 thousandths, which is the same answer that we got from multiplying fractions. The process for both algorithms are the exact same, which totally makes sense because decimals are just a limited number of fractions. Even as a teacher, I never truly understood the algorithm for multiplying decimals until that moment something clicked, the light bulb just went off, 
And it made me so incredibly excited and so very curious about all of the other ways that fractions and decimals are similar. From there, I just wanted to keep learning. Honestly, I think it may have been that moment that kind of sparked the journey for me of wanting to go back to school and get my master's in math education. So how can you create these types of learning experiences for your students that just give them this insatiable desire to continue learning? I've got three ideas for you. The first first idea is to share any new learnings you have with your students. If you are excited about something new that you learned and it's appropriate for students, share that with them. I truly believe that excitement is contagious. And so if you're excited about the math, your students will be too. Have them explore what you've learned, have them prove or disprove what you've learned. There's learning in doing that. The second way that you can create these moments for your students is to really focus on connections. The more that students see the connections in math, the deeper their understanding and the more appreciation they have for what they're learning. A lot of times we have a key learning target for the day, but one thing I loved to do on my lesson plans was to have a key connection. What connection did I want students to make during that lesson? I had a few questions that I frequently asked myself when it came to math connections. So first was, how is what they are supposed to be learning today connected to something they already know about this concept? Another question is, how is what they're learning today connected to an entirely different concept? An example being fractions and decimals. And lastly, how can I make connections within the lesson itself? So are there connections that I want students to see between different strategies or different representations? The more we can focus on these connections, the more excited students will be about the math they're learning. The last idea I have for you in creating these learning experiences for your students is to reevaluate your scope and sequence. Now, you you may not have the ability to do this, but if you do, I'd really take time to think about whether the order in which you teach different concepts is conducive for students making these really powerful math connections. Now, for me personally, I noticed that students really understood decimals a whole lot better once they had had experience with operations with fractions. And so after this experience, the following year, I reworked our scope and sequence so that the core work we did with fractions was done prior to the core work we did with decimals. I noticed a huge difference when I made this switch and I never went back. So if you can't rework your scope and sequence, I would really encourage you to make a huge note to yourself to come back to multiplying decimals after you've worked with multiplying fractions and see what kind of connections your students make and see how much better they actually understand multiplying decimals. The idea about reworking your scope and sequence doesn't just apply to fractions and decimals. There are other concepts that you may wanna consider moving around because they have such strong math connections. Measurement conversions and multiplicative comparisons have a lot of fantastic connections that a lot of times teachers and students miss because of the way that the scope and sequence is developed. So think about your scope and sequence and consider how you can move things around so that you are really setting your students up for success and making those big math connections. This moment I had with students was really a lived experience of the quote, the more I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know. It's probably one of my favorite things about math, that there's always more to learn. So if you are currently teaching fractions or you are just feeling curious and want to continue learning, check out this video where I walk you through how to multiply fractions using pattern blocks.